Doctors, surgeons, or nurses of Reddit, what's the worst thing you experienced while at work? Alright, before I begin I have to tell you guys that in a normal thread, where medical professionals talk about their job, about 50% of the answers are just way too dark to use. In this thread 90% of the answers would not make it into a normal video. No one should probably watch this. Just consider this a warning for every single trigger there is. If you know someone who works as a medical professional, take care of them, they're like the best thing we have. Taking care of a fall patient that broke her pelvis. She just found out her husband had cancer and she wouldn't be there for him. She was crying, telling me that he was there for every appointment and treatment when she had cancer and now he'd have to go through it alone. Holding a man's erect penis in my hand and then immediately sticking a needle into it. We are about to start doing pee shots, PRP, protein rich plasma, into penises at work. Apparently it'll give length and girth, when combined with a penis pump, to those with micro penis, and it'll treat Piranus syndrome too, that's a sharply bent penis, that can make erections painful. Fortunately, I don't believe they'll need to be erect. I frequently experience terminally ill patients dying, in excruciating pain with no euthanasia laws to support them, and people like my mother, who is, was, also an experienced ERRN, and who also asked for similar assistance, when she was dying. This case in my internship made me give up on specializing in pediatrics. Young boy got, brought in for rheumatic heart disease, already in heart failure. Apparently this all started from a minor skin infection, and went all the way up into his heart valves. We met him already in the PICU. He was still conscious and able to talk, and so for his first day we built a sort of rapport. The next morning, before my friends and I clocked out, he wasn't looking so great, so the resident in charge, called in the general surgery team, to perform a cut down, to expose his veins for access. I had to hold down the poor kid during the procedure, since local anesthesia could only do so much. He was screaming, so I told him, just hold on, we'll get through this. He nodded and said okay. That was the last conversation we had. When I came in for my next shift, he was already intubated. The only parent with him was his father, since his mother was employed overseas. Now for many of these cases, a letter to the employer is needed to explain why so and so must go home in this case of family emergency. I volunteered to draft the letter and send it out so we could get this lady on a flight soon and have her come home for her son. As soon as I put the last period on that letter I was typing in the nurse's station, the kid coded just a few feet away. We couldn't bring him back. The next worst part of course was telling his father what had just happened, and asking if he wanted us to stop the resuscitation. That conversation will stay with me. No one should have to bury a child due to something so preventable. Not a nurse, but a tech working on becoming a nurse. I've got a few stories. The saddest one was a woman who had an aggressive but treatable cancer. She was riddled with guilt from all the debt her family was incurring, and broke down, when she told me she wished she would just die soon, so that the debt would stop accumulating. That one hurt to hear. And then the grossest thing I've had, in addition to the guy, that was throwing poo at me every time I stepped in the room, I had a patient, that was over 500 pounds. I had been told, that she had a sacral, wound, and that during the night I would need to prep her for surgery in the morning. So the night is going on, everyone is shitting themselves repeatedly, and I'm trying to keep up. Then I go to get this woman's bed prepped for the surgeon. I step in the room and this lady tells me that she's had a bowel movement. I did not need her to tell me. It looked like she was sitting in a tub of old, congealed pudding. It leaked down the sides of the bed and had spilled out onto the floor. At this point I backed out of the room and went to get some backup on this situation. So there's another tech and four nurses, for a total of six of us, that were going to tackle this. Each of us had at least three contact gowns on, and we put on two masks with a layer of alcohol swabs, and vapor rubbing between them. Basically everything short of going in with full hazmat gear, but honestly I wouldn't have turned down a nice Tyvek suit. So we step into the room and all get to cleaning the rancid swamp out of the room. And I mean cleaning it off of things, that should never have had poo on them. 
so it's finally cleaned up to the point that we can actually approach the bed and get to work on the patient. We all position ourselves properly to roll her to the side, and it takes all of us to roll her. I happen to be on the ass-facing side for this, pushing her up. As we get her on her side, I see some gauze packed into her butt wound. Not unusual, but I knew it would be pretty gross. Problem was that the gauze had become one with the fecal material at this point, and so I basically had to reach in and start unpacking it with my hands. And it just kept going deeper. I was prepared for a nasty wound. I was not prepared to be elbow deep in this woman's ass, and as I unpacked it the smell of rotten feces began to hit, even through our defenses. One of the nurses stepped out and threw up into one of the vomit bags. So here I am, elbow deep inside a woman, cleaning the remnants of Lake Mishit Gan off of her literal tailbone, and apparently accidentally snagged a couple sensitive spots because of the couple times she yelled out and smacked me in the head. Eventually we managed to get the wound clean, packed it with fresh bandaging, and disinfected the whole bed, and finally she was ready for surgery. I had that smell trapped in my nose for a couple days afterwards. Just about all of us needed a few minutes to retch, and in some cases, vomit a little after the whole ordeal. And then I got to go back, to check in on my turd throwing friend again. These people are not being paid enough. When I was a CNA I got into a situation, where I didn't have gloves on, and got poop on my hand. I scrubbed like everything after, and moved on with my night. A while later I absentmindedly chewed my fingernail and tasted. You guessed it. Poop. I vomited and reheaved, ran to the bathroom, and scrubbed my mouth out with soap. It took a while for that taste to go away. Watching another nurse pulling a full mat away from a patient's floor next to her bed. When asked why, she said, in front of the patient. She about to die anyway. Her mouth was stuck open, because she was so emaciated, but she could still cry. Her frozen face somehow allowed her to still cry, after she heard that, and she did for a long time. I sat there with her. The patient was in custody of the state, a mental hospital, and they chose to withhold food and water. A type of force do not resuscitate. She was around 90 something. We were forced to watch her slowly starve to death. I quit right after that. I work in the PICU and it's a great job. I love what I do, and it is awesome working with kids. They are a joy to work with. That being said working in a critical care unit can have its emotional moments. The worst part of my job is hearing the cries of parents after the loss of a loved one. You never forget that. Good to have a good support system, and stay physically active to get through those tough shifts. CNA worst things you experience, are the people you're not allowed to euthanize. The people who live, in agonizing hell for decades, where you feel like a torturer, when you're holding them down, to let the nurse stick her 30 centimeter suction tube down their throat. I felt bad, when I had to help force this man to stay alive. I wish I could take every euthanasia critic to show him slash her the suffering some people go through, because we force them to live. Life just is fucked up at times. Sometimes we're powerless and death is just the best option. I worked a temp job for a local hospital's home health slash hospice department. One of my jobs was to call new patients and confirm their address before the nurse and or therapist would make their first visit. I had to call this one patient who tried to take his own life by jumping in front of a commuter train. When I called his uncle answered and went on a 20 minute rant about how worthless his nephew was and how he was a complete burden on the family now and that it would have been better if he died. I understand suicide can be seen as a selfish act but my heart went out to this guy. The patient obviously had some stuff going on to push to the point of attempting to end his life and then for him to survive and have to listen to his family members say such harsh things, it was brutal to say the least. I often wonder what happened to him. My uncle is an ER nurse. Someone brought a women's body in without her head. She was drunk and halfway out the back of her truck window when she got decapitated. After she hit something, the police went to the area where she got hit to search for her head, only to find it in the back of the truck at the hospital. Former paramedic. Long story short, got a call for what turned out to be a very dead, decomposing man who had passed alone in his apartment. His body was filled with gas, fairly common. As I'm standing by the body calling the hospital, 
to give them a heads up about what's about to come their way, and get approval to move. New EMT decides to poke gas-filled body. It explodes. He looses a hand and a trillion vaporized bits of dead old man cover me, got in my open mouth, under my clothes, etc. Taste was awful. After hundreds of showers I could still smell corpse on me. My SO at the time said every time she like nuzzled me or got close to my hair she could smell it too. It was like that for about a week. Still makes me gag to think about and that kid's life was pretty much permanently changed. Wait. The new EMT lost a hand in a body explosion. Yup. A lot of gas can accumulate in dead bodies and if it gets trapped it can be almost like a bomb. New guy was kneeling next to the body, I think this was his first serious call, because he had that kind of glazed over, I'm in shock look in his eyes, and he put his hand on the guy's stomach. It sank down into this bloated, gas filled sack until said sack just, broke. My crew chief said it would be like sinking your fist into a box of firecrackers. Honestly, not sure how he came up with that analogy, and didn't really work in my mind. But yeah. Dead body exploded, got gunk everywhere, and took off the EMT's hand. Longest incident report I have ever filed. CNA here. I once had a guy on a motorized wheelchair drive as fast as he could in the middle of the night. He ran into the handrail that goes along the hallway. He ended up with the rail going up his shirt sleeve and peeling back a good portion of the skin on his forearm. I had to hold a damp cloth on his arm until the nurse got the bandaging materials ready. The other aide I was working with started gagging at all of the blood and kept asking me how I could handle it. I had to keep her calm and keep talking to the resident to keep him calm. That was an interesting night. This was all a mistake. Sorry about that. I'll try again tomorrow.